G'day, I'm Richie Adair from CR Kennedys. We're the distributor of Leica Geosystems in Australia. That includes rotary lasers for construction, total stations for your surveyors, and for uh, general construction. The main brand we sell, of course, is Leica, and Leica is a beautiful Swiss company known for their accuracy, the Swiss. Leica makes some of the very best cameras in the world, and of course they make a lot of things for construction in my department. Today we're just going to have a look at a Leica rotary laser, the Rugby 610, with the Rod Eye 160 receiver. So there's different combinations you can get in receivers, but the 160 we sell probably 80%, 80 or 90% of the, of the Rugby lasers with this particular receiver because it's the best receiver on the market. Uh, I, behind me I've got a, a whole lot of different models here that do all different things, but the 610 is this fella here. And we'll get a good look at this. So it's a great laser. The main feature of this, of course, is simplicity. One button turns it on. You've got a couple of little lights, one to tell you the battery is, is good still, one to tell you whether the HI function, that's the, that's the height indication button, that tells you if something's happened, if someone's banged the tripod, if a truck's been passed and, and compressed the soil near it or something and it's, and it's sunk down, it'll detect that so that you don't make any mistakes. And the top one will be green when it's, the laser is actually running and it's automatically levelling. And a special feature of this is that you can change it to manual and that will turn, then turn red once you select manual. Very quickly, you select manual purely by holding the button in for five seconds. It'll go beep, beep, beep five times, and then it'll go beep, beep, beep at the end to tell you that it's locked into manual. The light will turn red, and you can turn the laser any direction then, and it'll keep running at that horizontal. So I'm just going to put it up on the uh, tripod so we can have a look at it. So there are different ways to power this machine. It can either be powered by the alkaline batteries set up, or you can buy it with a lithium rechargeable battery pack. It's a 4.8 amp hour. That'll run it for around 40 hours. It's, it's a working week worth of power there, running it all week, uh, and about 60 hours out of a set of alkaline D-sized batteries. You can also power it once you have the lithium battery, which has the power input on the front here, you can also hook that up directly to a car battery. It can also take a solar panel into that and that will both charge it through the day and run the machine and it will also allow the machine to keep running even at night time just with the power that's built up through the day on that. There's a number of other accessories that you can get to go with it. There's things like the batter board mount that allows you to clamp it onto the batter board and set it up so you can, you know exactly where it's got to go. You go out for smoker, you can take it off, come back, screw it back on, it's exactly in the same position as you left it before. You can also use this fella here, which is a, either a wall mount, it has the screws on here, it can clamp onto a post. It can also be used vertically and in both cases, vertically and horizontally, it can be adjusted left to right. And the laser mounts this way with the laser running vertically. This can be very handy for aligning things such as fencing, aligning formwork and many other things. One of my favourite accessories is this fella here. This is a manual slope adapter. So I mentioned about manual operation on this. This allows you to adjust the slope of the unit to anything from zero to 90 degrees. This is pretty handy in a lot of situations. I'll just put it on the unit so uh, we can have a little look at it.
Right, so we've got the unit mounted on here. Now, you'll see here, if I turn this down, we can adjust the beam of the laser right down to whatever angle you want. I'll just take it down a little bit further here, so you can see on the top of the laser here, it's marked with an x-axis, with an arrow, and a y-axis. When we adjust the x-axis, it's tilting, it's changing the level that way. When you adjust the y-axis, it's changing the angle that way. Now when you put it on this slope adapter, you'll need to put it so that the x-axis is in alignment with the angle that you're turning this here. This allows you to do a function called slope matching, or manual slope matching actually. Uh, other up-end lasers can do this, but only to the limit of the adjustment in the actual uh, mechanism of the laser, which for the very expensive ones is about 20%, and most, as with other models in the Leica 600 series lasers, go to around 8% and other brands around the place. 8% it seems to be the common amount. Uh, this allows you to go way, way more than that. So the instance where you would use this, it would be in, for instance, uh, setting up a boat ramp. Uh, I had a, had a customer who, was, who made prefabricated boat ramps. So it had basically a big concrete slab that they'd, they, they'd set up the footings for and then drop the drop the actual slab of concrete or the ramp onto the top of those footings. So he would basically set up the laser at the top of the where the ramp is going to be, at the point that the ramp is going to rest, put the receiver on the staff and then set it at a level, level with the laser. So it's shining on the, on the, on the laser here and you flatlined it and then lock it onto the staff and then just go down to where the footings at the bottom of the boat ramp are set up and rest the, rest the staff on that and then basically adjust this laser down until it meets the receiver and the receiver flat lines there. That means that you can, you've matched the slope from the top of the, of the ramp down to the footings at the bottom and now with that flat plane of laser, we can put all the pylons in between and all the supports for the, for the boat ramp underneath. Now we're just going to move on now to the receiver itself. Now the receiver is actually the main part that you use when, you, when you're using a, a rotary laser because once you set this up and running, it just sits there going and you don't touch it. Whereas the receiver is the part you've got in your hand, you're moving around your job site and taking measurements with it. Very important that you're able to find the laser beam easily. Now this has a couple of things that allows you to do that. Firstly, this laser I mentioned before has an 1100 metre range. Now you may not think, oh, who needs 1100 metres? On a normal building block, you know, that may be way overdoing it. You're not going to have one where you need that, that amount of uh, range. It's 550 metres each direction. However, uh, when it comes to finding the beam, if you've got that extra power, you'll find you can just go bip, it'll find the, the beam straight away. Much easier than uh, the old um, units that have much less. You'll find that you've got to really look for it very slowly. You've got to move the receiver till you find the beam. The other great thing about this receiver is the 120 mil receiver window. That's a great uh, feature, which means that, again, it's, it's almost three times as big as the conventional receiver window, most of them around 50 mils. And this means that I can, again, move it very quickly and, and it will be within range of the laser. When you move this up and down, if you've only got a 50 mil receiver window, the laser can sweep past the top of it, and then the very next, if you're moving it, if you're moving it too fast, it'll sweep past the bottom of it and it's missed the laser altogether. So this one has a much larger area that allows you to pick up the, the beam quite quickly. Now, I'm just going to start this running here so you can see the other features of this particular machine. Once I put this on, you can see there's quite a large display on the front and that's also duplicated on the back. 
So when I'm working behind the, the uh, receiver with my staff, I can see exactly what it's doing and move it up and down. Remember the receiver window here that's picking up the laser it needs to be facing towards the laser all the time. If I was standing in front of it, of course, it wouldn't be able to see the laser. Once I use this, you'll see that it's picking up the laser beam and there's uh, arrows here that are indicating how far you're going to need to move it. There's different levels of, of uh, accuracy. We can select half a mil accuracy, one mil, two mils, three mils, or five mils accuracy. If you're doing earthworks, you only need the five mils, just grating dirt around. If you have it on a half mil accuracy, you'll never get it to, to zero out and find how close you are to the mark. It's, it's great just to be able to have it set on, on uh, something that suits the job you, you're doing. So once I have this set up and I'm moving this up and down, you've got these 15 little points on the arrows here that are letting you know whether you need to move it up or down or where you're needing to go. It also is showing you the millimetre readout here to let you know exactly how far you need to be moving it up and down to get it on the mark. You see I can't hold it still enough to, uh, to get it to zero out there. Uh, those numbers there are nine millimetres high which are way larger than anything else on the market. This receiver is also IP67. Now I don't know if I mentioned that before, the, the laser is, has a, IP, a rating of IP67. Now that's what they call the ingress protection rating. The six is telling you how dustproof it is, and that's the highest level, so it's completely dustproof. The seven is telling you how waterproof it is. Now, eight is the highest level you can go there, and with the eight, you can throw it in the Murray River and come back in a couple of months and she'll be fine. With IP67 means you can still fully submerge it, just not real deep for long periods. So if a big truck comes past and splashes mud all over it, it's very simply, you can take it off, put it in a barrel of water and rinse it off, no problem. Now the receiver is the same, also IP67. Very handy when a big thunderstorm comes over and you're running around trying to get you, find your drills and your power saws and things. You don't have to worry about this, you can let it sit there through the, through the rain and uh, just one less thing you have to worry about on that. The brand Leica, you know, one of the best brands on the market. If you're a, a professional tradesman, you're going to want to have a a quality product that can be you can rely on that's going to work when you need it to work. There's a lot of Chinese made product around they all come from the same factory they have a lot of different brands on but if, if you want something equivalent to a Milwaukee or a Makita the true tradesman's brands you'll need to go to something like the Leica. There's only a few brands that fit into this category you pay a little bit more but in the long run they're fully serviceable you, you can use it for years and years and years. These other brands, generally once they're out of warranty, they're not worth fixing. In conclusion, just to wrap it up, there's a few reasons why you would buy the Rugby 610 with the Rod I-160. The main things are the high IP rating, 1100 metre range. The more power you can get in these sort of products, the better. Just makes it all easy to find the beam and, and keep working without having to muck around. Easy to read display with the uh, big display on the back of the unit as well and the big receiver window makes a massive difference to the speed you can work. And of course it has just the ability to one, one button and you go horizontal, automatically finds the level for you, but you can go to manual and add some accessories and work and do some other jobs with it as well. Uh, and the last thing, Swiss quality. The Swiss have that reputation. It's a great product and uh, you'll never regret paying that little bit extra and getting something that's really good. So there we have it, the Rugby 610 with its single button simplicity. Great stuff. You want something quality but not too hard to use? That's it. Thanks for watching.